thrilling victory for the St. Francis Brooklyn Terriers completing a season sweep of Wagner. I'm joined by our stars of the game, Rossell Hurley and Glenn Sinabria. Captain, that big three put you over the top tonight. Yeah. Um, it was an ugly game. You know, they kind of just, they did a great job of like switching up defenses and it kind of caught us. We were a little stagnant for most of the game. And uh, I don't even know if we really knew what we were doing at the end. We kind of just... The clock was running down. I, I, I kind of just saw opening, so I just took it, and I was thankful to make it. So. You look like with the shot clock winding down to about seven seconds, you were looking at Coach Breiker to say, okay, what now? Yeah, and yeah. you figured it out. Yeah, I, I mean, I came off, and I kind of saw him a little back, and, I, and I, I, just, I just raised up and just was able to knock down the shot, so I'm, I'm thankful for that. Now, you came out to a 7-2 lead early on against a man-to-man. -man. They switched his own. How did that mess you guys up? Because it looked like it gave you a lot of trouble. Yeah, um, yeah, it was tough, you know, because they were also switching during play. They would go from man, and then I remember, remember their coach yelling, all right, now, now we're in zone, now we're in zone. They just kept going back from, from a 2-3 to a man, you know, mid-play, so that's kind of hard to play against. We haven't really played against that a lot this conference, and they didn't really do it when we played them at their court. So um, it was an adjustment, but, you know, we're thankful for the win, and, you know, now it's just time to refocus. We got another one on Saturday. We got to take care of it. You got shut out in the first half. How important was it for you to get untracked in the second? Um, no, it was very important. You know, uh, I was kind of just in foul trouble. I picked up my first early, sat down, and then came back, got a second one, sat down. So it was just hard for me to get into a little rhythm. But in the, in the second half, I was just, you know, I just stopped thinking about it and just go out and just play. And uh, I, I was thankful to, to make some plays down the stretch. First home game since January 19th. Must have been nice to be back in front of the friendly faces. Yeah, no, it was unfamiliar for a little bit. You know, we've just been on the road for a while. We got, uh, well, now, I think it's, we had six of the last eight at home now for, uh, to end the season. So, you know, we're thankful for that. And, uh, you know, we just got to take care of home court and just take care of each game at a time, uh, starting with Saturday. So. Thanks for the time. Congratulations on the winning shot. That is Glenn Sinabria. We turn it over now to Russell Hurley. Big second half for you, too, young man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, I feel like it was just uh, defense for, for us in the first half. We, we shut them out. But I feel like, uh, like, like when they were switching the zone and, and a man, like that was kind of confusing for us. So, like, I feel like we just, in the second half, like we just adjusted. Let me ask you, how important was it that you guys put a clamp on Ramon Saunders? He comes in, their leading scorer, their leading rebounder, their leading assist guy, and he really didn't do much tonight. Yeah, uh, the first time we played him, he uh, really uh, he uh, did his thing. So, so we so we knew the night, so we, we had to shut him out so so we can try to win. Yes. It was really a slugfest in that yeah, first yeah, half. Yeah. You guys were down 19 to 17. You come out, you wind up winning this one. You scored a lot more points in the second half. Both teams. Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, I feel like uh, like the rest of the game is going to be like that. Because we are trying to uh, come first, second in the league. So I feel like, I feel like, I feel like uh, for the rest of the season, it's going to be like that. Let me ask you, how good was the home cooking? Because you guys were on the road. It's the first time you're back here since January 19th. It was lovely being here. The crowd was good. So I'm happy we won, basically. Congratulations on the win. Rossell Hurley. And we will have Coach Glenn Breika coming up after this timeout on the Terrier Sports Network, powered by NEC Front Row. Back here at the Pope after a 51 to 44 St. Francis Brooklyn win. Coach Glenn Breika joins us. First time you've erased a halftime deficit and won a game since the 15th of December. I had no idea, Mark. <laughs> I'm just glad we got it. It was uh, really every time we play them, it's a war. You know, they're tough. You know, we go at it all the time. And I was out recruiting the other day. I saw one of their assistants, and we were joking that, you know, the games are always so ugly. I said, yeah, it'll probably be 20, 20 at the half. I think it was like 17, 15 19, or something. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, those are the kind of games that we have with them. They're, they're great. I love games like that. They love them. It's, it's just, I'm glad we came out on top. It could have went either way. You told me Slugfest, Street Fight, it lived up well, to every it, bit. It, it's always like that when we played them. I thought they did a great job, you know, with the press slowing us down and, and taking us out of rhythm. And we got comfortable in the second half of it was tough to play against, and uh, but every time we played them, it's like that. It just comes down to, to just a, it's a war, and whoever gets a little separation wins the game. So, their strategy, Bashir Mason's strategy in the first half after you guys went up seven-two, they went from man to man to zone, and it really seemed to confuse your you know, guys. We, you know, we can shoot the ball, and we haven't seen zone in a long time, um, and we're usually very good against it. Just that we hadn't seen it in about you know a month and a half, two months. So. You know, we were a little tentative. I thought our guys were tight. And I hope it wasn't me, but I, I wanted them like that on defense. I didn't want them like that on offense. But it's hard to get them to change from one end of the court to the other. I thought we played really hard defensively. Um, I thought we rebounded a little better in the second half. I could be wrong. Look at yours, I'm look at um, maybe not, no. But um, 
I thought we were more active. You know, they went small. We went small at times. You know, it, it was just a war. And I'm just glad we came out with the win. Let's talk about the job you guys did on Ramon Saunders. He came in averaging, you know, number one in points for them, number one in rebounds, number one assists. He was held to two free throws in the first half. He went three for 14 on the night. You told me yesterday when we talked that you were going to show him different looks. How effective was your approach? I, I don't know. He's a great player. I was worried. We backed off him once early in the second half, and he hit a three, and I was worried it was going to get him going. And then we put another guy on him. We played about four or five guys on him throughout the night. So we wanted to try and keep more balance a little bit, but he's a terrific player. He can score on the perimeter. He can score inside. He goes to the glass. So I, I didn't know that those were his stats, but he's a really good player. Yeah, let's talk about the threes, because Glenson Aubrey came out right after halftime, knocked down the three that Saunders answered, but then your guy had the big three that broke the tie in the final minute. Yeah, I mean, you get 10 in this game. It's like getting 30 in another <laughs> game. So, but Glenn, listen, he puts so much into it. It's nice to see him have success because he's just a world-class kid. He works so hard. All these kids are, but especially him being here five years and, and Keon, you know, he just puts so much into it. Um, so it, it's really nice uh, when, he, when he's successful and everything because he, he's everything that's good about the game. First to four straight here at home. You're now eight and one at the Pope. How good was it to get back here and have some home cooking? You know, I think we were tight coming home. A lot of times people say your first game back at home is tough because, and I thought we were a little tight offensively, you know, back in front of the home crowd and everything. But, you know, look, five in a row on the road is not easy. Um, you know, we didn't finish it the way I wanted to, but we got a couple of wins out of it. And now we're back home. We got to try and take care of business. But it, it doesn't matter where you play. You got to play well. Because every game in this league is a war. Every game we've had here has been a war. Every game on the road has been a war. So you just got to try and crank it up and be ready to go. Wagner came in looking for revenge on you. Now comes Saturday after you comes in. You're looking to avenge a loss at their place. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess, you know. But, <laughs> yeah, you know, we, we just got to prepare tomorrow, rest our bodies, and get ready to play. And FDU is a terrific team. I mean, they, they were struggling when we played them the first time. And, and they got the win. And it was a touch-and-go game. And then they went on a roll. I don't know what they did tonight, but they've been playing great. Greg's a great friend. Yeah, Greg, Greg's a great coach, great friend. And, um, you know, it's going to be another war Saturday. There's no nights off in this league. So, All right, we'll get some rest. Yeah. Thanks right. for the time. I'm glad you're feeling better. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. 51-44, St. Francis Brooklyn defeats the Wagner College Seahawks. Terriers complete a season sweep in the series. I'll wrap things up with Coach Barry Rorson when we come back after this on the Terrier Sports Network, powered by NEC Front Row.